Preserve, current proprietor of the Capitol and Brooklyn Bowl, the owner of the Relics Magazine, and the founder of the Lockham Festival. We're super excited. Hey. Yes. Could you start by telling us about some of the main goals that the organization Headcount focuses on accomplishing and how they do this? Yeah, um, Olivia mentioned Wetlands as one of the venues that I owned and ran. Um, in the 90s, a long time ago. And Wetlands was unique because we tried to bring activism and uh, consciousness about issues and um, the environment and social justice issues. We, before the internet, we do it at the shows, like put up information at the shows. So headcount, Wetlands went away around 9-11 because it was in downtown New York near the Trade Center. Um, but after it went away, a few years later, a lot of the regulars from Wetlands who experienced how great it was to like be at a show and get educated or and get involved, we, we decided we should continue that and we started Headcount in 2004. And Headcount was about getting particularly young people engaged and active and participating in the electoral process, basically. And mostly using music. So like going to concerts, being at venues, being at festivals, and like taking this moment when people are having fun and trying to put a touch of doing something good into that. So that's what Headcount does. And it's now, wow, 16 years and we go to thousands and thousands of shows every year. Every summer we're at, like set up at the major Lollapalooza and ACL and Outside Lands. We go to all the big festivals. Obviously now we're not, which is tough, but we're pivoting and evolving and, and still, still making things happen. For sure. Um, so you mentioned Wetlands a little bit, but um, can you tell us a little bit more about your story and how did you know that you wanted to get involved with Headcount and why? I, I was given Wetlands in 1996 by Larry Block, who created it and founded it. He literally was like, if you continue the environmental activism um, mission and fund the couple employees who work there, he was like, I'll give you Wetlands and you can pay me on a monthly payment. So I was like, wow, I'll do that, you know? <laughs> And it was so cool. I saw just, I felt it was really important to have a place for people to gather because you didn't have like the internet. So the idea of Wetlands was before the concert, the meeting would take place at the venue before the concert. And then I actually helped start Headcount. So it came like sometimes when you see something, that's like life. Like sometimes you want to join stuff. And sometimes it doesn't, if you don't think it exists, you need to start it yourself. And so Headcount, I helped start with Andy Bernstein, who runs it day to day. And there's a bass player in the band, the Disco Biscuits named Mark Brownstein. He was also like a big Wetlands regular. And we were just like, we got to continue that energy of Wetlands. And that led to Headcount. Headcount has taken part in so many live music events every year. Um, why do you think this has been such a successful location in getting people registered to vote? What about it? That's a good, you know, I think, well, recently people see if you don't vote, what happens? It matters. And, you know, listen, when you're at a show or at a festival, and you guys know, everyone, hopefully everyone watching has been to some kind of show, like, you have mo you have downtime. There's before the show, there's in between bands. Festivals are all day. And, like, it's fun to wander and explore. And maybe buy clothes or food or beer. And then they'll be like, oh, 
I can register to vote. You know, we just, and, and technology is both good and bad, I think, in this world. Just to get right, very simple. It's yin yang, it's black and white. Like we're seeing ways that technology can be manipulated or can, you can use technology to manipulate people. And, but there's good parts of technology. And one of them is actually recently at Headcount, we now can go with an iPad. So if we're like Bonnaroo, you know, in the table, we used to have like pieces of, you fill it all out, the register to vote stuff or pledge to vote. If you're, and now we go with an iPad. You know, so you can actually just do it digitally. And anyone watching or listening, you know, you can also confirm your voting status really easily. You can just Google that, put in head count, am I registered? And it should pop up. And you can confirm really quickly now online um, your voting stat, your registration status, and where you're supposed to vote. But like five, 10 years ago, you couldn't do that. And we would be registering people with paper. But you know, we're using digital at least at the headcount on, so, you know, so that we can get more people. It's very simple. But we set up a table and what we can do with older people, you know, people like my age, old, you can pledge that you will vote. If someone pledges, says, I promise that I'm going to vote, they actually, there's correlation that they actually do vote in the end, right? So even a pledge is valuable. And we were trying to spread out where we go. We're starting to go to like, um fairs parades then we stay agnostic and like gun the issue of guns or abortion or some of the more traditional democrat versus republican issues we try to not touch and what we try to be is nonpartisan. um i try to believe that like the more that people vote the more the right result will happen and it's, it's, it's tough to see if you look and people can at home, just look at the 2016 election. I don't know all the stats offhand, but a lot of young people did not vote. They were not inspired. And, you know, I would just say, even if the candidate maybe doesn't inspire you, what their policies are, are going to protect the Supreme Court for the way you want to live. Yeah. And you mentioned um slightly like how you guys already started transferring the digital um before COVID. Um and now that a lot of the events that you were going to are canceled, how has Headcount adapted to those circumstances all while still get people registered for this very important upcoming election? You know it's it's a good question. We've had to go all digital because right, there's no concerts and our whole model was just going to concerts so we're working with partners we're working with labels to talk to their bands you know fans want to be active you know it makes a difference when they do a post and say i want to make sure all my fans are registered or engaged or voting and go to add headcount you know and so we're outreaching to lots of bands um, and members of the music community and we actually were growing into doing stuff with like Abercrombie and Fitch to do stuff this summer with MTV, you know, and we're just trying to get, there's National Voter Registration Day coming in September. We're doing a lot with Global Citizen, with, you know, and Michelle Obama, as you guys may know, is really active with voter registration. She's got a group. And I think it's going to happen. Sorry, you can even hear, I get excited, it got loud. I think it's gonna have, I think young people are gonna come out. I think COVID, I think um, Black Lives Matter, I think all these things that have happened have really illustrated the importance of our leaders on people's lives and like what the policies are. And voter registration, by the way, is up. We had one, we had like our biggest month ever in June, all digital, where usually we'd be at Ariana Grande concert or could be a Caballo concert and Ariana, you know, all these all great, you know, and now it's all digital, but we did almost 20,000 people just uh, young people registering online in June. Like that can decide, you know, a state, which can decide an election. So like it all matters. And it sounds like you guys had a good month in June but what are the biggest challenges that Headcount faces in getting people registered to vote? And um, do you see these issues lying more because of COVID-19 or because like you said, the country is so divided right now? What we have is sometimes people being like, 
there's no point in the bounty. You know, I'm just a per, I'm just one person. I'm just maybe a young person. You guys are a teen or I'm just, or I'm like me mid forties and I'm just jaded. doesn't matter. You know what I'd say is like, but it does because the president elects things like the, the juror appoints judges, just the environmental issues. There's huge divergence between, let's say what the, uh, under the Obama administration, what the environmental laws were and under the Trump administration, what the environmental law is, how they're trying to change them. And if Trump's reelected, the next four years will just go in a certain direction in terms of all like environmental laws and clean water acts and financial regulations. You know, and so again, I'm not gonna get into like right or wrong. Some people may say less regulation, pro-business or more regulation, protect humans. You know, whatever side you're on, you got to express how you feel. There's only one way to do it. But you got to believe. Like, it's hard sometimes to still believe and be positive. Hopefully you guys do because you're young. But me, you know, especially now with COVID and then all after the protests. But I, I try to believe in, you know, we're going to get to a better place. And sometimes you got to struggle to um, get there. But when we get there, it'll be good. And, and when talking about believing, do you believe in this next generation? And do you have hope that, they, um, that they're that they aware and are um, of, the, of the value of this election and are willing to face the adversities, um, long lines, risk of getting COVID, and no hope? Yeah, I am. You know, what you guys are doing, you, you listen on Instagram, you see a lot of stuff that's more materialistic and and escapism and at the beach and that's more fun you know it, it, this stuff's more stressful <laughs> to sit and think about like do i want to go shopping and take photos on the beach in a new bathing suit whether you're a guy or girl or whatever or do i want to like think about voting you know and getting people to vote and think about the supreme court and laws and the environment going away you know <laughs> global warming like it's easy not to think about that stuff and sometimes you win, you know, better, easier. But I do believe, yes, I believe. You look at those protests um, a month ago with the BLM. Like uh, it's led by young people always, always has been. At Wetlands, it was led by young people. Those meetings, you know, in the '60s, it was led by young people, and they had their own problems with Vietnam coming out of it. And we, you know, so I, I believe, yeah. I think we will see really big youth voting come out and and partly maybe because of this. I don't know if COVID had not happened and maybe George you know, Floyd had not happened. I, I don't know exactly if the economy was steamrolling, you know, what would have happened with the election. But maybe this was like a test and a way of young people getting to see how important voting is, how important who your lead leader is. Yeah, for sure. And when, when you're talking about that, too, it's like you have to vote for, for what you care about. You know, it's not it's not even like, do you want Trump or do you want Biden? It's like, do you, are you voting for our climate? Are you voting for you to feel safer in school? Are you voting for um, you to have the choice with your body? You know, it's it's that, too. And I think that's a really important thing to to talk about. And that's definitely what we're trying to get to this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for your time. And now that this conversation is over, it's time to get involved and take action. Go follow Headcount at headcount.org on Instagram to learn more about this upcoming election and register to vote if you have not already. And make sure to put pressure on the people in your life if they have yet to register too. And check out headcount.org to learn more about how you can volunteer or donate. Thanks, guys. Thank you.